Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to PowerTips. Welcome to PowerTip 54 and 55. In this PowerTip, we're going to look at designing a two-section filter using P-Spice. This is a typical kind of requirement that you see for a low noise power supply. So in low noise requirements, many times you'll see ripple specifications down in the 0.1%. And so when you translate that to decibels, you'll see that you need a ripple attenuation of greater than 60 dB. Now, 60 dB of attenuation in a filter is a rather major cha challenge for a single section design. You're going to be limited by parasitics in the components and, and coupling that will make it just almost impossible to get more than 60 dB from a single section. So you're stuck with two sections. And there's several major uh, issues in dealing with a two-section filter. Uh, one of the big ones is that you have a potential for 360 degrees of phase shift in your filter, and that's going to create quite an issue for your control loop. So what I found that works in designing a two-section filter is, is kind of take this approach. I'll allocate the majority of my filter into the first section. I'll normally choose my output inductance value. And that, what no, that normally means is I'm usually working with a buck regulator on these. And I'll choose the peak-to-peak -peak grip current in the output inductor to be 20 or 30 percent of the, of the DC current. Uh, for sure, you want to split the two resonances between the two sections of, of the filter. Uh, you want to put the majority of your output capacitances on the second stage. And this does a couple of things for you. It helps if you have a customer that's using your power supply that puts a lot of capacitance on it. It'll minimize the impact of that capacitance on the control characteristics of the power supply. And then finally, in, in these designs, I found it best to damp the second section of the filter. So here's typically what a two-section filter might look like with a lot of attenuation. Again, you'll find that there's a relatively large input inductor to the filter, um, and if you looked at the two values of the capacitance, is the capacitance closest to the load is very much larger than the capacitance that's within the filter. You'll find that there's a small inductance between the two output capacitors and then you'll find that we've damped it pretty heavily also. Now we're going to use P-SPICE to do two types of simulations. The first simulation we're going to do is we're going to predict the output ripple. And we're going to use a simple circuit to predict the output ripple. And so what we have up in the upper left is we've used a voltage source to set the initial conditions on the power supply. And so we've set up so that the output capacitors have three volts on them and there's three volts on the output. And then at zero time we open the switch and then we also start switching our switch here that simulates the power stage. And so um, basically we have a period of about 1.75 microseconds or, or frequency about 600 kilohertz on this particular switcher. And so th this is a very simple simulation to, to run that converges well. And then after a portion of time, you can take a look at the output ripple out of the power supply. And this prediction says that we're going to get about 100 microvolts peak to peak on the output of the power supply. And if you go through the hand calculations, you'll find that this is pretty consistent with the hand calculations. So we have good faith in this prediction, except for the fact that we didn't include all the parasitics in our simple model here. Uh, there's ESLs that's associated with the output filter capacitors, there's ESRs, there's distributed capacitance that's associated with the inductors. There's also a magnetic and electric field coupling that we can't simulate, or we haven't simulated yet. The current in the first output filter inductor might couple in, into the second stage and reduce the effectiveness of our filter. And then just electric field coupling can be a problem too. So many times you're um, you might consider doing some shielding to reduce the coupling, um, doing high frequency techniques such as feed through capacitors for final high frequency filtering. Now, the last big issue 
with this um, approach is that we're going to have to close the control loop around it. And there's going to be a significant amount of phase lag that's associated with this additional filtering. So this is kind of a continuation of what we did in Power Tip 53, except for I've added the second stage filter in, into our simulation. So beginning over here at the left, we have a voltage controlled current source uh, that represents the area of fire within the control IC. We have compensation components. We have the modulator delay of the power supply modeled as a delay line. And then we have a voltage control current source that represents the current mode control within our power supply, which turns the output inductor into a current source. And then we also have our output filter capacitor resistor, and then we included some ESRs in, in the capacitors. And then finally, load resistance, and then sampling network here. Now, a couple of things that we've done here to help us with pushing our loop bandwidth up on the power supply is we have very well damped the second stage of the filter in the power supply. And then also over here, if you look at our output divider, we've put a capacitor around the top resistor on a divider. And what this allows us to do is this puts a zero in the control loop uh, at a frequency that's set by C13 and R56. Now, we were fortunate in this case that we had a fairly high divider ratio in our divider so that there's a, a pole that's formed by this capacitor and this resistor. And basically, you can't get any less than 100% of this signal to this, this point. So one more thing we need to look at is this out, output divider here. Um, in this output divider, we have um, a resistor that's in parallel with C13. And so at some frequency, the capacitance, reactance, and the resistance are going to be equal. And that's going to set a zero in the control loop. As an interesting point over here all around the output divider, we've been able to add a pole and a zero in, in our control loop. And the zero is formed by um, this C13 capacitance and R6 resistance. And it's effective up to the point where um, basically you have the same signal here as here, and you run into another pole at that point. So what we've done in, in this simulation is we've looked at the gain from the output of the air amplifier to the first and second node in the output filter. And you'll see that the dotted lines are to the first section and then the solid lines are to the second section. And you can see as we cross 100 kilohertz that we picked up a significant amount of attenuation in the filter and you also see that we've picked up a significant amount of phase lag due to the filter also. So for instance, if we were trying to cross the power supply at 100 kilohertz, we would have to add an additional 20 or so dB of gain to the power supply control loop, and then we would have to comprehend an additional 90 degrees of phase lag. So after looking at the two output nodes in the output filter, we had two choices where we want to close the power supply control loop. One would be at the first node and the second would be at the second node. In the case of the first node, we would have a lot more gain to work with and we would have a lot more phase to work with and it would make our job a lot easier. However, the um, downside of that is that output filter inductor probably has some resistance associated with this, and we would not get as good of a load regulation as we'd like. And then finally, th there might be some ringing that's associated with that second stage filter, so the transient responses might not be as good if we could close around the second loop. And so that's what we've done here. In this particular simulation, we've shown closing the power supply control loop around the second section. And again, the way we were able to do that is by damping the second section that basically saved us 90 degrees of phase shift. Um, we added in a zero in our divider and that gave us another 45 degrees of phase boost. So uh, what you can see here in this simulation, we have about 45 degrees 
a phase margin on the power supply at crossover frequency. Well, thank you for your attention on this power tip. Hopefully it proves useful to you in your design process. For more power tips, visit Power Management Design Line and search power tips, or click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video. Thanks.